All right. So as far as the projects go, um, what we did last time was talk about this one here, where you hack with um, Ollie Debug and you mess with Putty just to change the message. And then a couple other challenges here, like the one where you use that really simple game where you uh, have to guess a number. And that's good practice at using Ollie. And the next project after it is just more of the same. And I got this from the Flare On Challenge, which I'll talk more about later. Every year they have this challenge from FireEye, and it is wonderful. And last year they had all these versions of Minesweeper. And I, uh, what a part of that challenge I was able to do, I turned into projects. So here's a Minesweeper, this game, a Windows XP game, and you can modify it. And what's cool, this was also written up by the author of um, Mimikatz, the hacking tool. He, he wrote actually a Mimikatz module to cheat at this game just for fun because this game is fun to cheat on. So in this game, you're looking for these mines and there are these numbers and you can use these numbers and logically figure out where the mines are, sort of like Sudoku. But of course, that's not interesting to us. What's interesting is cheating. So if you load that game in Ali Debug, then you can examine the memory. You can see the memory and the, so here's Ollie Debug. The thing is called MindSAM and it's got a few sections and the interesting part is the data section. And if you view the data section, there's just a lot of zeros. But if you start the game and then go back, you can now see the pattern of mines here. Notice how there is A's and B's and then a lot of zero F's and some 10's and some eight F's. That is the pattern of mines. This is the data section that just shows it. Uh, the A's are ones, the B's are two, and the uh, something the other ones are mines. So you can totally cheat at the game by reading this. And so you can get a Microsoft tool called ProcDump that dumps memory, and then you can write a Python script that will process it. And so you can um, you can see the memory just this way. By, or, and by just giving the pattern of mines. So here, for example, you can see I've got a twos and ones. So those will be visible here. Here's the twos, the Bs, and here's the A. So here's the pattern two, one, one, and here it is BAA. So the pattern is here, and the mines are gonna be these, um, 42 is a B, 41 is an A and 8F is a mine. All the 8Fs are mines. So you could cheat from here, but what's more fun is to write a Python script that will just print that out in a more readable way. So you can totally do that and make a script that will reveal to you where the mines are so you can cheat on the game. And so I made a modified game that has flags in it. And when you cheat and win at various levels, you find flags. Anyway, um, the last one, you can't play the game in enough time to win um, you're going to have to use some of our other malware analysis techniques to find the flag in there. But this is, so this is a more practice with um, reverse engineering on malware there, and that's fine. But I wrote this using Ollie Debug. Now, let me mention um, the Flare On Challenge is, I think I put it here. Yes, here's the Flare On Challenge. I highly recommend that you do this, although it is very difficult. Um, this is from the real people that wrote your textbook. This is from FireEye. They're the world's expert in this stuff. So if you go to the Flare On Challenge, it starts here, and now you have a sort of Unix prompt, and you can type help and figure out how to get there. Uh, and what you'll find is it'll eventually lead you to here, and it has rules and stuff. But the point is, you can register, and this challenge, most Capture the Flag competitions go for like a weekend. This goes for six weeks, and they are not kidding. It is really hard. There are 11 challenges and you have six weeks to do them. And I don't think I ever got beyond level four ever in any year. So um, several of the projects in my homework are from the challenges I was able to defeat here. So I learned a lot doing it. But one thing that I finally caught on is I should try doing it the way they tell you to do it. So let me make this bigger. Uh, if I type help, they'll, it'll show you, a, I can do LS, the list of contents. This is just like a little Unix shell. And there's something called resources. So I can change directory to resources and then do an LS. And here it's going to give me some information. And they're telling you what tools to use. IDA Pro, Ollie Debug, WinDebug, and X64 Debug. Those are debuggers. This is a disassembler. And another thing, okay, 
And they also have some books, like the first book is the book we're using and so on. So that's good. But the thing you really should use is the official Mandiant tools. And that's what I'm finally doing this semester. Now, there is this thing called Flare VM, which is the official Mandiant malware analysis VM. And so years ago, I thought I should be using that, but it's very hard to set up. And when I was set up, I was just frustrated. But there's, there's another similar issue, which is students frequently say, there's this new tool and that new tool, rather than the one I'm using, which are from that textbook. Now all these tools are about five years out of date, and there's a lot of newer tools. So I finally decided it's worth using this thing. Because I went to the um, uh, unicorn contest, Unicon, and they had a, a malware analysis capture the flag, and they told you to use the Flare VM. So that's what I did. So I made it a project. The reason why I've been reluctant to do this is you really have to have a pretty powerful machine. You have to be able to run a virtualization software locally. You cannot put it in the cloud. And you have to have at least 60 or 80 gigabytes available and a fast internet. And even if you have all that, it will take like 12 hours to set up this machine. It is really big and really slow. But once you're done, it's pretty nice. So you have to have Windows 10. And what they say, just go get a free Windows 10 from Microsoft. Microsoft has a 90-day trial Windows 10 um, available on their website. So you can get the latest one here, Windows 10, um, and download that thing. And they have it in every virtualization platform. So you can use um, VirtualBox or VMware or something else. And then it has a username and password that's always the same. So you download this thing. And, it's, and run that. Now you have a Windows 10 machine running, and then you put on Flare VM. And all you have to do is in your machine, you go to Firefox, and you download this file, and you run it. And it will now take like 12 hours installing stuff. It puts tons and tons of software on that machine, fills it right up to like 40 gigs full of software. So when you're done, you have um, this thing. This thing is the Flare VM. Let me close my windows. There we are. All right. Uh, this desktop, I think, is the Microsoft background telling you that this is a trial version or something. And you see, by the way, it won't last long. I've only got 64 days left on mine. Now, they say you can make a snapshot in your VMware and revert to that so you don't have to make a new machine. But I don't have the, I might be able to do that. But I don't understand how you could stop it from just connecting to the date server and discovering that the time has run out. So I might try that, but I'll probably just make it again. Now that I know how to do it, it's not that hard. It just appalled me that it took like 12 hours. But I mean, I can make a fresh one every 90 days. I don't think that's asking too much. And the point of this thing, the reason I decided it's worth using, is this thing is like Kali Linux. If you do our pen testing classes, Kali Linux is the pen tester distribution, and it has about 100 tools installed. This has a ton of tools. There's a folder called Flare. And when you go in that folder, it's got a lot of goodies in here. It's got Android tools like Dex to Jar, which I know from the Android class. Here's debuggers. It's got Ollie Debug, Ollie Debug 2, WinDebug 64 and 86, X30. And it's got WinDebug. It's got X32 and X64 Debug and something called SC Debug, which I've never used. So it's got all the debuggers. It's got decompilers which is pretty awesome. It's got um, disassemblers. Here's Ida Pro, and there's other ones I've never used. It's got .NET tools, which we uh, use in the exploit development class. It's got flash tools. Those are kind of out of date. It's got forensics. It's got autopsy to do forensic analysis of disk images and volatility to do RAM analysis of RAM right here on Windows. Those are tools I normally only use on Linux. It's got Java Office tools to analyze Microsoft Office documents. It's just got a ton of great stuff here. And so, um, and it's running on Windows 10. Logically, we should not be running this class on a server version of Windows because almost all malware targets client versions like Windows 10 and Windows 8. The reason why I don't do it that way is those things are not licensed for use in the cloud and you're not supposed to share them and stuff. So I've been using server versions all along, but I've always known that is kind of sleazy and unprofessional. You should really be using a desktop version of Windows for this kind of stuff. So I think from now on, I will standardize in this Flare VM. I'm, and this semester, it's all extra credit, but I think this is really a way to move this class forward. 
uh, into using the more modern tools. And I'm going to try to get rid of the old tools like Ollie and use the more modern tool. The tool that's most like Ollie um, is this X64 debug. However, what um, I just heard from this uh, Microsoft engineer that's been watching these videos is he told me that Microsoft has improved their Win debug tool. And I started writing that up. I'm going to add more projects there. So if you go to the projects page um, here, there's this Flare VM here. There's going to be a series of more projects here that require you to have a Flare VM. They're all extra credit. You don't need to do them because some of you probably have something at home like a Chromebook that really can't run VMs. And if that's the case, then you won't be able to do this stuff. But for those who can, it will be um, more modern stuff. And anyway, so the thing I wanted to do was I wanted to try doing these same debugging projects in the Windows debugger. And I got started. So here is, there's a new version of WinDebug. And um, is this it here? I thought I already had it right. Yeah, this is the new version of WinDebug. It's a little bit better now. So you can open it and see things. I cannot find any way to see the memory map, though, or the memory segment. So I tried to do this project where you hack um, putty, and I can't even find the way to search memory for a t reference text string. So I'm going to have to go back through their tutorial. They do have a very good help system here. So there's a page teaching you how to use this new Win Debug. And um, so I'm going to write a series of projects where we learn how to use this new Win Debug if we can actually get used to using WinDebug, we just use that. And this is what a lot of people do. A lot of people in business, I say, what do you use? All you use is WinDebug. I don't bother with this Ollie debug or any of that nonsense. Just learn WinDebug and then you don't need anything else. And I know it's true. So I'm going to see if this new version of WinDebug is, is more palatable. It is nicer, but you still have to put in a lot of command line commands. However, I'm used to using GDebug on Linux where it's all command line. So it's not like that's impossible. And if you get used to WinDebug, that's all you ever need because it can debug the kernel. And uh, this question, can you use an external drive? You can. If the only thing you're missing is storage, you could have an external. Now, you can't usually use a thumb drive. It doesn't work. But if you have a USB connected hard drive, you could run virtual machines from there. I have had students do that in the past. So anyway, you don't have to do any of this to get an A in the course. But if you want to really be you know, doing the cool, exciting stuff, I highly recommend getting this thing going, this flare on thing is much more fun than I thought it would be. And um, I'm trying to do it to do the flare on challenge. So you also, if you're really tough, try this CTF, but it's really hard. I did the first level, that was pretty easy. It only took me a couple hours. The second level, I'm now on like the third day of struggling with it. It is, it gets hard fast and it gets really hard. I, I managed after like a day and a half, I was able to finally compile my own custom version of the UPX Packer. So anyway, just like before, when I'm done, it's probably going to turn into like three or four more projects in this course because I'm learning great stuff. You, you give you a piece of malware that is compressed with UPX, the same thing we used before. And like about here, we used right here in project 102, there was a tool here. And when you ran PEID on this thing, it told you it's packed with UPX. So you had to get UPX and unpack it. So that's fine, but what a lot of people have figured out is that's too easy. So they break the thing. They break the header of the UPX file so it won't unpack. Now you have to either figure out how to fix the header or you have to figure out how to fix UPX. And I'm struggling with that. <laughs> and, uh, but now I can at least compile custom versions of UPX. So I'm reverse engineering UPX to find out what should be in the header. So it's a good thing to do. But there, as far as I can tell, there is no tool that does it for you. You just have to reverse engineer UPX, which is not impossible, but it's, it's quite a chore. So anyway, um, the Flare On Challenge is awesome. It really led to quite a bit of what you're doing in this course. And, uh, and this Flare VM is probably going to be my standard tool from now on. So, so check that stuff out. It'll be uh, good for you. And um, all right, I think I'll stop this video, and I'll stick around to answer questions if there are any.